we'll have a whole section on manipulating equations. But since we're doing inequalities, this is a rather small class of question. I wanted to talk about inequality manipulation here. We will talk more about this with equations later. So with inequality manipulations, basically what you'll be doing is you'll be given an inequality or a system of inequalities, and you need to come up with what could be or must be or never could be concluded based on that set. So often the question will ask you, you know, which of the following must be true, or which of the following could be true, or which of the following is never true. Now, one, a few things to keep in mind about these. These are all asking pretty different questions. So if they're asking must be true, you are looking for a choice that works 100% of the time. So no matter what numbers you plug in, no matter what situation you look at given the constraints the problem gives you about that inequality or system of inequalities, it always works. So if you go ahead and are able to prove with algebra that that statement must be true, that's a really secure way to make sure that you're getting the answer right. What you want to be careful of, and we'll look at this in a second, when if you decide to plug in numbers, so pick some numbers, test out some possibilities, let's say you test five numbers and they all work. Hooray, so this must be true, I guess. Well, is that really true? Think about it. Just because you've tested five cases and those five cases have, have worked, does that mean it's going to work for every single number you plug in? Not necessarily. That's no proof that it's always going to be true. So you have to be careful when you're plugging in. On the other hand, if you plug in a number and it doesn't work, you know that choice is gone because you have found a situation where that, situ that case doesn't work and so it must doesn't have to be true. You found at least one case where it isn't, so then you can eliminate it. So if you're plugging in numbers with a must be true question, you hope to eliminate choices and narrow down to the right one. It's very hard if you're just plugging in to prove that it must be true. Could be true. This means the choice works at least once. So again, if you plugged in a thousand numbers and it never worked for those a thousand numbers, does that prove that it could never be true? No, because if you find one case, one point out of the infinite number of points that works, that choice could be true. So what you need to do again is do a little manipulation, move some stuff around and see if you can prove uh, that it could be true. But again, if you plug in some points, if you find one point that works, you know it could be true. So you have to be careful with plugging in. If you plug in some points and it never works, is that because it never works or because you just haven't found the point that does? So combining plugging in, as we're going to see, with, with manipulating the inequalities, that's the ticket to really securing the answer. Never be true is like must be true in the sense that it's absolute and the choice basically doesn't work 100% of the time. And it's similar to must be true in the sense that if you plug in five points and those five points don't work, you might say, oh, look, it, it doesn't have to be true. Well, all you've proven is that those five points don't work. You haven't proven that all the possible points don't work. So you have to be careful. Either you want to manipulate the inequality to prove that it will never work, or if you're plugging in points, if you find a point that works in that choice, you can get rid of it because you've just proven that it doesn't have to Wait, it never isn't not true, whatever. It, you've proven that it that it could be true, and therefore never be true isn't correct. So it's very hard to talk about this abstractly. We will see examples of this, and I will always bring this up when we actually see real examples. So uh, if this was a little confusing, come back to it later after you've seen some questions, and it might make a bit more sense. So let's see an example. Y is greater than X plus A, Y is greater than X minus B. In the XY plane, if 1, 2 is a solution to the system of inequalities above, which the following relationships between A and B could be true? We have a could be true question. And we want to know uh, which of these could be true. So which of these will work at least once in our system of inequalities? So remember we said before, when you have constants, or at least something that looks like constants in an equation, and you're given a point, plug in that point and see what that gets you. So let me do that here. 2 is going to be greater than 1 plus A. 
and 2 is going to be greater than 1 minus b. At this point, you might try testing the choices and seeing if they could work. So for example, if I made a equal 2, would that work? Well, I would get 2 is greater than 3, and that's false. So we can get rid of a. Let's make a equal to b. So 2 is greater than 1 plus, we'll say, 3, and 2 would be greater than 1 minus 3. How about that? We'll make b, a and b equal to 3. So here we would get 2 is greater than 4, and 2 is greater than negative 2. Well, this one is true, but this isn't. So this doesn't look like it works, so maybe we'll get rid of it. And you could test c in this way, and when you test c, you'll see that it doesn't work because you'll get 2 is greater than 2, and that's not true. And if you plug in something for d, like d, like a is 4 and b is uh, 2, and you plug that in, again, it won't work. And then you'll realize, wait a minute, I've eliminated all five choices, or all four choices. And this gets to what we mentioned before when we were discussing could be true. Just because you find a situation for these choices where it doesn't work doesn't mean that it's never going to work. Maybe when we plugged in the points, like maybe with D, maybe we plugged in points that don't actually work out for us. Maybe we plugged in points that if we plug in a different set would actually work. And so it could be true. Maybe with B, we plugged in instead of three and three, maybe if you plugged in five and five, maybe it would have worked. This is the issue with testing points. You don't really know for sure until you've either eliminated three choices and you're left with one or you uh, prove it directly. And that's what I want to show you here. So let's continue here. Let's subtract one from both sides. We're going to get A is less than one when we do that. Subtracting one from both sides, we're going to get negative B is less than one. Divide both sides by negative one. That's going to get me B is greater than negative one. So with these conclusions, I can go to the choices and prove which ones are true and which ones are false. So notice A equals 2. Is that true? Well, no. A has always got to be less than 1, so I can safely get rid of A. Can A equal B? Well, yeah. Notice if A is 0 and B is 0, that would satisfy both of these, and that would, that would work. So that looks pretty good. How about B equals negative 1? Could B equal negative 1? No. B has got to be greater than negative 1. Now, this one's a bit trickier. Could A minus B equal 2? So notice uh, A has got to be less than 1, and B has got to be greater than negative 1. So notice what you can actually do is uh, kind of subtract. Well, could you subtract them? Would that really do anything for you? Mm, yeah, let's not go down that route. That might be a bit confusing. Let's instead, yeah, I, yeah because we have the signs different. Let's not, let's not go down that road. Um, notice, uh, actually, we will go down that road. So let's get this so that the signs are the same. Let's go back to negative B is less than 1 for a second. Since the signs are the same, I could add these together, and I'll get a minus b is less than 2. Notice a minus b can never equal 2. That would prove it. So that's one way to prove it. Let's say that was a little bit confusing. What you can also think is, all right, if a is less than 1 and b is greater than negative 1, and I want this to be equal to 2, what would be two numbers that I could plug in given these constraints that would satisfy this? Notice the biggest that a could be is something less than 1. So let's say like 0.9. This is an example. And the smallest b could be is something like negative 0.9. And that only gets us to 1.8. And if I decrease a or, or increase b, that's not going to get me any closer to 2. In fact, it's going to get me farther from 2. So when we try to test points and plug things in, we're going to see that d never works. And the only one that could work if we plug in a certain point, the only one that might work is B. And we can prove that from the inequalities. And you could, you know, plug in 0 and 0. If we plug in 0 and 0, we'll get 2 is greater than 1. 2 is greater than 1. Yeah, that's true. So uh, that one works. How about this one? We're given an inequality. If X equals Y, which of the following must be true? Again, you could test points, like pick an A that's less than or equal to B, and then plug it in and see if it works. That can get confusing. So again, let's start with our inequality and let's see if we can simplify this to see any key relationships. They tell us that x equals y. So I'm just going to substitute x in for y. And I get that. And notice when I do that, if I subtract 2x from both sides, they cancel. So really, this 2x and 2y is irrelevant given that x equals y. So I'm left with negative 2a is greater than or equal to negative 2b. And uh, if I divide both sides by negative 2, 
I get A is less than or equal to B, and notice that's choice A. So I can, simply by manipulating this inequality, get to the solution directly. But like I said, let's go back to um, let's go back to our equation here. Let's say we had A is less than or equal to, well, let's do it this way. Uh, let's say if we wanted to plug in points, would it make any sense? Not really, because all we know is that if A is less than or equal to B, you know, we can test, could these be true, right? Could B, C, and D be true given this relationship? So let's see, um, or must they be true? So notice if A is 3 and B is 6, it may look like that A squared, which is 9, and B squared, which is 36, it may look like that B is satisfied. But notice if I pick something like A is negative 6 and B is 3, that still satisfies this original, but when I square them, I get 36 and 9, and that doesn't work with B. So notice we can find a situation in which B is not true, given these constraints. Same thing with C. You can find a, a, a case, say, A equals 2 and B equals negative 3. That satisfies the original, um, but it doesn't satisfy this. And then the same thing with D. D is really just a form of B. If I do negative 6 and 3, the absolute value of negative 6 is 6, and 6 is not less than 3. So long story short, by testing, you could do that just to double check, but you can see directly that A is going to have to be true given the rearrangements of this inequality. So when you're doing these must be, could be, never be true questions, plugging in is a good backup. It's a good way to give you a feel for what's going on, but you want to try to manipulate these inequalities to find a different relationship that will then inform your answer in the choices.